premium ships are something many of us World of Warships players have invested in. They're great for printing credits, for training commanders, and of course just all around fun if you do pick up the right premium ship. But there are quite a few out there that should be, well, avoided at all costs because they are pretty worthless. There's either a tech line variant of, in some cases, the exact same ship that is in fact better than the premium ship, or some tech tree alternative, or even a free premium alternative that is just downright better than some of these premium ships. And I've compiled five of these ships together for today's video where we are going over my top five worthless premium ships. Again, these ships have some tech line alternative or some premium alternative that are just much better, does the same thing that this ship does, but just infinitely better than the ship we will be discussing, well, one of the five ships we will be discussing in today's video. So if you do find this video informational and entertaining or you just downright enjoy it, please make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel while you're down there. Helps out tremendously so on the YouTube side of things. And this first one does truly hurt me to have her in here, and that is the Tier 5 Premium American Battleship, the Texas. Now, the Texas is a special ship to me. It's one of the first museum ships that I visited in real life. And it was one of my first premium ships that I picked up when I downloaded World of Warships, naturally, as it was a ship I had visited in real life. Now, the Texas back in the day was quite very, very good. You see, the Texas is the second of the New York class battleships. And she was one of the first American ships to have a dedicated AA suite installed on her. And Wargaming just took that idea and ran with it. And that's, you know, very apt of the U.S. Navy during World War II. They just kept bolting AA guns onto everything. And Texas Endgame is surely bristling with AA guns. Now, back in the day, before the CEV rework, the Texas was simply the best AA ship in the game until you got to Tier 8, bar none. There's even an old video on the channel that I mentioned when I talk about the Texas, which is an old AA test that I did where I put like 10 midways in a training room on the enemy team, and I ran a bunch of AA ships through it, and sure enough, Texas was up there with the best of them because of how great her AA was. Now, in today's World of Warships, her AA is, on paper, mathematically, her damage is through the roof. However, with the CV rework, Wargaming went in and standardized a lot of parameters when it comes to AA, including range across certain nations at certain tiers. And for the American battleships at tier 5, their AA range is now 3.5 kilometers. Which, if you know anything about CVs, is pretty much nothing. So essentially, unless you are a CV player dumb enough to sail around, or fly around, I should, I should say, within three kilometers of the Texas's AA, you're going to get a big hit flying through it, but it's not really going to do too much. Now, you might be saying, well, Sealer still has, you know, better than average AA. Why is that a big deal? Why is it on this list if it's completely worthless? Or how is it completely worthless on this list, right? Well, you see, to balance out that god-tier AA back in the day, they hit Texas pretty hard with a nerf hammer when it comes to the guns. She has less range and a much slower reload than her counterpart, the New York, at tier 5. She has almost a 5 second longer reload than the New York. She has a 34.5 second reload, whereas the New York has a 30 second reload. The same guns even has less range than the New York, but they are the same guns. And for some reason, she still has a 34 second reload today. Even though her AA has been nerfed dramatically so to where she can't... Like, I don't think you guys understand, you newer players. You didn't go near a Texas if you were in a CV that cared about your planes. Because back in the day, the planes didn't respawn when they were shot down. The Texas's AA, even if you didn't build into it, was godly. If you ran into a Texas that had actually built their AA... It had pushed their AA range. I think you get it's like 6.5, 6.7, maybe 7 kilometers. I don't think it was 7 kilometers. Maybe it was like 6 kilometers back in the day. Um, you, you, Your planes were going to die if you went near an AA build Texas. So a lot of CV players would just ignore the Texas. That's how crazy this thing was. Even if they managed to you know, get in a fail division to somehow get to tier 8, the tier 8 CVs would just leave the Texas alone. That's how crazy this thing was back in the day. So if you were tired of being harassed by CVs, you took a Texas out. Now, today, 
yeah, again, the CB player might go, oh, wow, I took a little bit more damage than normal there if I fly if I flew through that Texas's AA, but it, it, it's not really as punishing. So still today, for whatever reason, she has less range and a longer, much longer reload than her Tier 5 tech lane counterpart. So if you want to take a Tier 5 American BB into battle and have the best chance of performing the best with it, just take a New York. Because you get a 30 second reload on 10 14 inch guns at tier 5, which is quite a bit of firepower, and you get better range. Whereas a Texas, you get a shorter range, longer reload for the exact same guns, exact same performance, and every other aspect except for the range and the reload time. So, despite Texas's thing being nerfed into the dirt, still all these years later, keep in mind, that was patch 8.0. We're about to get to 13, what, 3 this coming week? Yeah, for that long, nothing's been done to the Texas, so sadly, it's not really worth the money. As much as I wish I could sing the ship's praises, because I love the ship in real life, again, it's a very important ship to me, but it's just not worth spending money when you could buy a New York, get the premium package for the New York, for the for the uh, economy boost, and have much better performance and a much better time in today's game. So with that very painful entry out of the way, let's go on down now to our number four slot which is the Tier 8 Premium British Aircraft Carrier, the Indomitable. So, yeah, the Indomitable is a ship that I completely forgot existed. <laughs> uh, she is quite an old CV now. I believe she came out about two years ago. And she is very unique in that she only has two squadrons. That might be saying, well, Sea Lord, I mean, there's a couple other CVs in game that only have two squadrons. That is true. By... Uh, the time that this video has been recorded, there's, I think, like, three or four of them that do exist in the game. But on top of only having two squadrons, each squadron in the Indomitable's uh, flight group only has two squadrons. <laughs> and each of those two squadrons, with the exception of the... Well, I, with the exceptions, the other half. With uh, the rocket planes, you get three planes per squadron, and with the bombers, you get two planes per squadron. So you've got, like four planes R -r really you, you you just use the bombers so you really only have four planes to play around with with the indomitable however they are fast they do have a high uh degree of armor on them so they are fairly tanky with their speed and their survivability so you do have that going for you there but obviously I, I, just out of the gate you can see where this cv is probably not something you want to pick up because it has such a small plane count because, obviously, if you're a new CV player, I mean, shoot, when you have a normal size squadron, losing planes does hurt. Uh, especially when you're a newer CV player and, you, you know, you're not good at dodging the flak or anything like that just yet. But when you have a very small number of planes, obviously, that's uh, not very ideal. And it's not just that. The Indomitable can be a pretty decent CV, if you know what you're doing. She has a high skill floor because... You have to really abuse this old system called slingshotting. Slingshotting was this mechanic back in the day where after your planes attack their target, there's a brief instance between that first flight attacking and the next flight uh, being controlled by the player where the planes were completely invulnerable to AA damage. That was removed from every single CV in the game with the exception of the Indomitable because of her small flights. Of planes so she can still do that today however it does take a bit of practice to get used to and you have to constantly be doing it to get a decent amount of damage out of the indomitable why because really like i said you're going to be using the the bombers and you can you cannot let more than one or two of these bombers go every like two or three attack rounds because you are going to run out of them so you have to be slingshotting you have to be doing it constantly and you have to keep up a high uh a high cycle rate like what you're seeing in the background here i picked one ship i parked the carrier close to it and i just keep kicking him over and over and over and over again and you can see like per attack run the bombers aren't really doing that much damage and keep in mind too since the indomitable has been released there's been quite a number of global nerfs to bombs they've messed with the reticle with the way that the bombs fall they messed with the damage and all this other stuff has been nerfed since the ship has been released and that has certainly affected her performance and you really gotta be on top of it you really gotta know what you're doing you really can't have any downtime with the indomitable so you have to be on top of it and even being on top of you know making sure your planes are getting there as fast as possible dropping your bombs on and launching the next squadron as fast as possible getting those planes there as fast as possible you're gonna get like an okay-ish amount of damage like this match this is a tier 8 game I finished with like 120, 130,000 damage this game, which is 
fine by tier 8 standards, but I had to be, again, making sure I wasn't wasting a second, trying to, you know, slingshot correctly and all this stuff. Granted, I'm not the best CV player in the world, so I'm sure, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can get the ship to perform well. But, again, she just has that skill flow that's so, so high when you could just research the tier 8 tech line British CV and have an infinitely easier time getting better performance out of it than the Indomitable. So again, you want a tech line, or you want a, a tier 8 British CV that's going to make you some money. You can just research the tech line one. Again, buy the premium economic bonus for a fraction of the cost of the Indomitable herself and have a much easier time getting better performance out of the ship. Uh, the tech line British CVs are some of the best ones for you know getting that nice damage over time forming but the indomitable again it's like you got to be like hyper fixated on it to really do well with it so not really worth it in my opinion and hence why i say it's a worthless premium ship all right going down to number three we have the tier eight american battleship the California, man, y'all are probably tired of me talking about the California, but yeah, th this thing is just mega, mega garbage, in my opinion. Now, to be fair to Wargaming, they have actually given California a couple of small buffs here recently that have made her a bit more comfortable to play at Tier 8. They've given her the engine uh, parameters that the Vermont line has, so now she's quick to get up to speed and quick to stop, so that makes her a bit more comfortable playing her in tighter situations. And they have shaved her reload time down from 34.5 seconds to 32.5 seconds, so a nice two-second buff to the reload. Would I still say don't buy the ship? Well, it's on this list, ain't it? <laughs> well... She is a little bit more comfortable to play. There's still no reason to buy this thing. Why? The Arizona exists. So, the Arizona is a tier lower than the California. And she has the same gun setup as the California. Like, literally, the same gun setup. But she only has to deal, deal with tier 6 matchmaking, whereas the California has to deal with tier 7 matchmaking. Which means the California can, of course, get double up tiered to tier 9. Which uh, is just painful in most tier 7 battleships. But when you're in a California, which if you are blind, it's a massive target. It's, you know, a post-Pearl Harbor refit. It's a Tennessee class refit post-Pearl Harbor. So they added on the torpedo bulges, the secondary mounts. There's a ton more uh, superstructure there than, of course, before uh, the Pearl Harbor attack. So you have so much superstructure to farm, these huge torpedo blisters to farm, that so many Tier 9 cruisers, destroyers, and battleships are just going to see you and just see free damage floating there. On top of all that, too, the guns aren't that great like 12 14 inch guns that is a lot of firepower even at tier 7 but man i don't know if it's just my luck or what but the california's guns just never have really performed fantastically well for me i think i've had one or two games that i had some pretty good runs in them but the guns just seem to be wildly inconsistent which is kind of weird for an american battleship american battleships tend to have some of the best gun performance in game when it comes to their accuracy and their consistency but the california just really hasn't done it for me i mean you can see in the background footage too you know it's just kind of a scatter gun and you can imagine playing this at tier nine when if you have four 14 inch guns you have to be able to you know make sure those shells go where you want them to go because 14 inch guns can work at tier 9 like we've talked about with the uh duke of york she's a tier 7 battleship but when she gets up to, to tier 9 she can fall back on the you know british bbhe and her guns are generally accurate enough that the shells will go where you want them to at least thereabouts you know by tier 7 battleship standards but the california just it, it just doesn't you know, it's like, why would I want to, you know, putter around in this fat tier 7 battleship when I can putter around in a tier 6 battleship with the same gun layout, but you get fa more favorable matchmaking? You don't have to deal with tier 9 battleships. You don't have to deal with, you know, any of that insanity that they're introducing at tier 9 now. You can just, you know, chill at tier 6, see a tier 8 game every now and then, and keep in mind too, like tier 6, that's, you know, tier 5 and tier 6 can mix up, and there's a good chance you might get a bot game at tier 6, because, you know, tier 5 games and below can be populated with bots. So now you have the same guns that California has at tier 6, and you, can, and you can see bots that you can just absolutely farm and get, you know, great income from, because it's still random battles and not co-op. So, yep, yeah, California, worthless, 
because the Arizona exists and is a much, 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 much better purchase than the California. So again, Arizona good, California bad, state and the ship. Moving on now to our number two slot. We have the Tier 8 French Premium Battleship, the Picardy. The Picardy is a ship that I like to say caused the French to disappoint me uh, two times in one week because the Napoleon movie came out and was terrible. And then World Warships released the Picardy, I think like the week of or shortly thereafter. Uh, and, I, and I know, you know, the Napoleon movie wasn't made by French. Thank you, Ridley Scott, for ruining that. But anyway, uh, Picardy, man, Wargaming just had, they just had to complete their unofficial second French battleship line, or as I like to call it, the premium reload booster line. If you haven't noticed from tier uh, 7 to tier 10 now, we have a up-tiered French tech line battleship that they just slapped reload booster on and called it a day. Except with the Picardy, they made some very weird choices with it. So the Picardy is a Leon, as you know, we all know and love our Leon, our little tier 7 goofy French gun barge, right? We've all, you know, loved getting into a division of three Leons, focusing a target down, and just showering them with 36, you know, shells. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to witness. So they took that, up to it to tier 8. They did beef up its armor to tier 8 specs, but then they dropped the gun caliber down to 305 millimeters for some reason. And it's like, okay, they dropped the caliber down to 305s. Okay, so surely then the guns must be more accurate than the Leon's guns, right? Because if you're going from 340 millimeter guns to 305 millimeter guns and getting up tiered, like, okay, I could see maybe this works if they're accurate. They're not accurate by any stretch of the imagination, unfortunately. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what the reasoning was behind this, but okay, they're 305s now. They're not more accurate. They're smaller, and now you have to deal with tier 10 ships. And if you guys, you know, can't math, 305mm guns don't really overpin a whole lot when you see tier 10. So, of course, you have to um, just be relegated to HE spamming because you can't overmatch a lot at tier 10. So now you have an HE spamming up tier Leon that does have a reload booster, but you have the 305mm guns, which shatter a lot from my experience. Don't really start that many fires. I mean, you, you would think, you know, mathematically, 15% fire chance by 12 guns. You know, that that's over 100% fire chance per salvo. But that's if every shell hits. And since the guns are inaccurate, every shell is, unfortunately, not going to be hitting. So, yeah. You have an HE spamming Leon that is stuck at tier 8. It's going to be in a lot of tier 10 games. And then, on top of that, too, while they did beef up the armor to have 32mm plating on the extremities, it's still not great. And then with the gun layout, if you want to get all your guns on target, which you really need to because of how inaccurate they are, and because, again, 305mm gun, you have to show an uncomfortable amount of side, which leads to you getting slapped, and you die. Now, the reload booster is pretty neat because, sure, if you do catch someone broadside, you can crank off an extra salvo or get a follow-up salvo pretty quickly thanks to the, re to the reload booster, but it doesn't change the fact that the guns aren't accurate, and, you know, it is a battleship, so you're not going to be reload boostering every shot. So, yeah, it's just a miserable experience. And, again, if you want a French gun barge, a French gun, gun barge with 12 guns, just get the Leon and buy the premium pack for it for the economy, and you'll be on your way having a much better time in the Leon than you do in the Picardy. And finally, that takes us down to our number one slot, which should be no surprise to anyone that caught Friday night's live stream, and that is the Tiger 59. The Tiger 59 is an absolutely miserable experience. I know, I played it for two hours on stream on Friday night. I was challenged to get 100,000 damage in the Tiger 59, and I'm not that great of a light cruiser player, but... Most tier 8 light cruisers I can easily sail past 100k in because light cruiser, right? Rapid firing guns, you just keep spamming the target, eventually it'll it'll get there, right? Uh, the Tiger 59, not so much because it's essentially, what, uh, a sixth of a Minotaur? Or like a third of a Minotaur? It's a ship that has two Minotaur turrets on it 
and they're, they're the Minotaur shells, to give them credit. It's got all the improved AP pens and all that stuff. But that's it. You get two guns. That's it. That, that's it. that is your entire damage output. No torpedoes or anything. And no, you don't get HE. So you're stuck in a light cruiser, British light cruiser, with four Minotaur guns. Which means that... You're going to be hugging islands, spamming your AP shells, your four AP shells, at enemy ships, and there's one in the front, one, one in the back. So it's not even like those situations that you could get in the Minotaur where you can at least get half of your guns in target by hugging the island. Nope, you've got to get your whole uh, side out in order to get those guns on target. That does have smoke and it does have radar, so it's, it's got a bit of utility to it. But man, is it just incredibly frustrating to play. Because if you ever played Minotaur, you know that you don't exactly get a lot of pins and bounces and shatters um, all about the, uh, let's say, what am I trying to say? You don't get a lot of pins with the Minotaur. You get a hell of a lot of bounces and shatters and such, and it's just through the overwhelming non-stop rain of AP shells that you manage to like, you know, death by a thousand paper cuts with the Minotaur. Well, with the Tiger 59, it's, well, generally not a lot of death because it's hard to kill anything with a ship that isn't a destroyer or a light cruiser selling broadside away from you because you have four guns, whereas the Minotaur, again, has like triple this firepower, if not quadruple this firepower. No, I haven't played the Minotaur in a hot minute. So, yeah, it's just a miserable experience. It has British light cruiser armor. You do get a super heal to counter that, but it, it, it's just don't buy it. it. Don't worry about buying it. It's not a fun time. Um, what's a, a fine replacement for it? Any any other tier 8 cruiser. Anything. Tech line. Premium. I don't care. It's better than this thing. This thing is a terabad. I don't know how Tiger 59 mains exist. I don't really think they do because I don't ever see this ship in random battles. So, yeah, completely pass on this one. If you get it in a super container or a Christmas container, I am sorry for you. Sorry for your loss there. But, guys, those are my top five worthless premium ships. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? What would you add to this list? What would you remove from it? What are your top five worthless premium ships? Let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday, wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.